Hi, Bill Lanting, America's allergist. We're talking asthma. And the thing is, how do you know you have asthma? And I think of asthma as having interference with your lifestyle, that you're not breathing well. So you think about maybe having asthma if you have breakthrough symptoms, okay? Who thinks about their breathing? Nobody, it's like your heart beats, you don't think about it, it happens. Same thing with breathing, we never think about it, but if you do, something's cooking, all right? Why is that happening? So the breakthrough symptoms of asthma, five big symptoms. So if you have shortness of breath at rest, you don't think you can take enough air, you can't take a deep breath, that's not normal. Or you have tightness or constriction of areas. Again, that is not normal. If you have limitations of activities, meaning you have to stop when you're doing activities because of your breathing, or slow down because of your breathing, or you don't do stuff, you avoid activity because you know it's gonna cause respiratory problems or symptoms. Some people don't bike or hike or play organized sports or do things because they know it's gonna cause them problems so they just don't even do it. One of the other things is that you can have symptoms at night Asthma gets worse at night when it's not treated, and that means having cough in the middle of the night that wakes you up, or a lot of times people have cough and it wakes up the spouse or the mother or the father. Um, also, you can have breathlessness in the middle of the night, again, nighttime symptoms, or when you first get up in the morning, you could have cough or tightness. This is indicating, gee, I must have had problems overnight, and again, remember, asthma is worse at night because the chemicals you secrete in the middle of the night to protect asthma are lower then than they are during the day. If you have wheezing, wheezing's not normal. Remember, air flows in a straight line through your breathing tube. So if you have wheezing, that's not normal. Or if you need albuterol, you know that puffer that opens up more than twice a week. So those are the five breakthrough symptoms. Now, if you're then suspicious, or your doctor is suspicious, or your specialist that, hey, this sounds like asthma, there are three tests that they can do. The first is that they look at your breathing tube size with something called spirometry, a pulmonary function test. You just breathe into a machine and it gives a percentage of what your airways are in terms of the precise. And then you do albuterol, the bronchodilator, the opening up medicine. And if there's a change, well that, that's asthma because if we don't have asthma, you stay the same size. But if you have asthma, you'll improve. So the gold standard is to improve by 12% in your large breathing tubes, and a lot of us also look at the small breathing tubes. So that's what we say here, pre and post. Before and after albuterol, what's the size of Did they change? Because remember, asthma is reversible airway disease. If we're still not sure, and it sounds suspicious that it's asthma, because common things commonly, asthma is really common, then we do something called a methacholine challenge. And what that is, is that you inhale this substance called methacholine. If you don't have asthma, you may cough, but your breathing tube stays the same size. But if you have asthma, then your breathing tube is gonna constrict, and the magic number is 20%. Now, don't be scared if somebody mentions this test because we start out with like a really, really, really dilute minor amount in solution, and then we build up the concentration. And if along that, a uh, bunch of uh, breathing tests with this methacholine. If you do constrict 20% or more, they stop the test, they dilate you, but that means I have asthma. Now, that's a whole series of different inhalations. So something new is coming up called mannitol. It's like the methacholine challenge. If you inhale it and you don't have asthma, your airway size stays the same. But if you have asthma, you constrict by 15% or more. So this is kind of a cool test because you only need to do one inhalation of it. It can be done in almost any specialist office. It doesn't take any fancy chemicals. And so this is gonna be the wave of the future using mannitol in the office. But symptoms sound suspicious. Do the pre and post. Most of the time that'll show if you have asthma. If not, then a methacholine challenge in some specialist office or usually in the hospital. And mannitol coming to an office near you. Asthma diagnosis, once you know you have it then, you have to sit with your doctor and figure out, how am I gonna treat this, what do I need, and do your meds. Live a great life with asthma. I'm Bill Lanting, America's Allergist.